Hi, welcome. I'm Tom, your host, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast. This format is part of the Instagram blog Drop, and you can find us under at Dropback Official. We do reviews, news, and interviews that all have to do with the film business. In this show, we will talk about the alternative movie poster scene and look at the latest releases. Every episode, we will also have an artist on that will tell us about their work and they will answer all the movie-related questions we can come up with. So stay tuned and head over to our Instagram profile at DropMacOfficial and look in the stories to follow along with the art and pieces we're going to post. And also check on YouTube for the video version. There you will have all the pieces in one place. So now let's get started. First off, um, we will take a look at the releases that came out in the, uh, in the last couple of weeks. And then we will talk to Eileen Steinbach, who is also known as SG Posters in the scene. And she will have a lot of answers for us. So stay tuned. First of all, we will start with the pieces that uh, came out in the last couple of weeks. And we will look at different artists from last week, but we also have a couple of the same and we will definitely check out some gallery work and also uh, a book this time, which I'm really excited about. And we will start with our first work, which is by Anne Bambi and it's called Wonder Woman. It's for the Wonder Woman 84 film, of course, and this is some really beautiful piece of work, I think. Very detailed, um, and the, the accents are very well drawn. And the other one that came with it is this one here. And it also captures the spirit of Gil Gadot, I would say, very well. And um, I think it was sold out in the first day already and very good piece. And I really like to see what she's going to do in the future. I think she is an upcoming artist. Um, I will, yeah, I, I really like to see what she's coming up with the next couple pieces she's going to put out. Our next piece is going to be by a German artist. His, his name is Apogenk, and uh, he is a friend of mine, and he put out the Blade Runner 2049 piece, which is really, really cool. It is pencil drawn, I think. There were only a run of 25 for White Duck. I think it was White Duck, yeah, the, the, the publisher. And he has, he has some um, artist proofs coming out soon, so check in on uh, his Instagram, which is posted down below. So. Uh, he will let you definitely know when they are coming out and I'm really looking forward to forgetting uh, my print I think he has them already at home. So maybe this is a good good time to remind them get them get them prints out man and uh, Another Blade Runner we are talking about is this one here by Gaps he did a really really great job on this one I think this was a release for the Facebook fan group only or at least they had like a good chance to to um, Get at, get at this release. I think it was, I, uh, no, I forgot which store it was, but it is a really cool piece. There was another one with uh, with a white frame and I think kind of like um, purplish accents in it, which was also really cool. I think this the, the regular var variant is better than the, uh, than the other one. Uh, the regular version is better than the variant version, so th this way around. So yeah, and I really like this piece. Uh, it has all the cool artists in there, and, um, the cool artists, the cool <laughs> characters, I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, great piece of uh, artwork, great piece of movie, and um, keep coming. let's keep coming with those Blade Runner 2049 pieces. I really, really enjoy them. And our next one is by a very great artist, um, Laurent Durieux. I hope I didn't butcher the name of as well. Uh, it's the seventh voyage of Simpad. I think it's for the hundredth uh, anniversary of um, Ray Harryhausen for his birthday, and uh, his special effects he did in the, I think it was sixties um, were legendary and um, visionary for that time. And he did, um, Laurent Durieux did this awesome piece that captures um, this this mood perfectly. And I think also the um, when when you look at the the colorways and uh, he's using lately in his style, it's very it's it's you can see it definitely his his works what he was doing before. I have um, a Frank Lloyd Wright Architecture Edition, which is really cool, and um, you can see the similar style and the similar uh, color schemes he used, and uh, it. Probably gonna, it's probably gonna look very well at my wall if this one uh, gets to me soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, um, our next one is another one by Gaps, and he made this wonderful piece, which is obviously Gollum, as you can tell, is part of the Lord of the Rings edition for Bottleneck Gallery, and they did um, they did this. He did. I also have this cool John Wick in the same kind of color scheme. Um, I am a Lord of the Rings fan, but not that big, but I was thinking about really getting it because um, the character of Gollum is very, um, for when in terms of movies, very le legendary and uh, very perfect um, established when at, at this time when it came out. And I really enjoyed this portrait piece, um, one of many Gaps did. So shout out to Gaps, uh, good job on those portraits. Yeah, and as, as I said, there are more uh, Lord of the Rings pictures or prints and here's another one by Pablo Oliveira. Um, there's like a little piece missing on the side, but I think you will get the the whole um, the whole print. And I put it also in the show notes, and you can see it online, of course, so you can follow along. Um, but yeah, this is a very cool piece for the Hobbit trilogy, I think, uh, or I think it should resemble the Hobbit trilogy because he did another one. I'm going to show in a second, which resembles the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And this one is really cool. It has Smaug in there. It has the treasure in there. It has Bilbo in there. So yeah, very cool uh, landscape piece of art. And I love the dimensions he uses. Um, I also showed you last time the Neo Tokyo one I got, which is really cool. And yeah, this one also goes perfectly along with uh, this kind of style. And here's the other one I'm talking. I was talking about uh, Lord of the Rings one with the olive fans in the background. We got Eowyn. We got the Nazgul. Um, very similar in style um, from uh, where he put the characters and all uh, his ideas. But really cool execution. I really like it. Minas Tirith in the back. Um, yeah, great, great art. Public Rivera, keep doing this, good, doing your things. I really missed out on the Los Angeles uh, 2019 for the Blade Runner series. I missed out on that. I wish I could get that somehow. So if somebody has a chance to get that for me, please let me know. Um, another one, uh, the next one is uh, also by Bottleneck Gallery. It's the Doctor Strange. And this is the gold variant. There were a couple different ones. And this one is by Ise Ananpada. I hope I said that right. And uh, it's a really, really cool piece. I The first time I saw it, I was, there's a lot going on. I didn't like it that much. But after looking at it a couple times, I am kind of sad that I missed out on the Doctor Strange, uh, on this Doctor Strange piece. There are a couple out now. And I think the Mad Ferguson one is still one of my favorites. But this one comes close second, definitely. And a really good job on the, on the details and the different um, um, aspects of or those two sides and also Domamu in the background. Really, really cool, cool stuff. Okay, and the next one is part of the Fantastic Four series uh, by Mondo and Mondo Killian Ang is this is by Killian Ang. He did Galactus, which is one of my favorite Marvel char characters overall. So I really was looking forward to get this one, but it's so hard since um, since the this this like reseller game is stepping up i think it's it's getting into the the sneaker kind of side of uh, side of things where more and more people try to get those pieces and sell them for a lot of money and this happened to this piece and the 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 next one the silver surfer one i'm going to show you in a second as well and very sad that i didn't catch either one of them but they're really beautiful pieces but right now i think they're on ebay for around 300 or 400 so it's a lot of money so yeah, we'll have to sell a couple more of mine, I guess, if I really want this one. Okay, um, as I promised, here is the F Silver Surfer one. This is, I think, this is even way cooler. I, there was a variant also with the with purple in there, but I like this kind of with with the two colors way better. And this one is by Daniel or Daniel Taylor, and uh, he did a really good job on this one. I really love this one. I wish I could have gotten this one. This is even more better than the Galactus one. Uh, since Galactus and Silver Surfer, yeah, they are like Silver Surfer even more than Galactus is my favorite character. So I'm really bummed that I didn't get one of those pieces. But maybe in the future, I will have the chance. Our next one is, as I promised you, a book. And this one is the Laurent Durieux um, Mirage, The Art of Laurent Durieux, as it's called. Uh, and this is a book with all his art. It's like an art book, of, co of course, as the name suggests. And um, 
there was a Mondo edition for $100, I think, and this is part of it. I, that's why the cover is in there, and you can see um, at the at the bottom of the uh, of the case that this says Mondo on there, and they put in three like mini posters, you could say, printed ones from Jaws, I think, Birds, and something else. And yeah, this was a really cool edition, and I already pre-ordered the back in back last year in September, I think it was. I pre-ordered the this book to get it from Amazon, so I'm really looking forward when it comes out. Really, really cool piece of art, I think, uh, to have at home and for not that much money. So check in on that. Um, the next one is also by Mondo. It's Hunters. And this is a TV show piece by Matt Ryan Tobin, who did really cool work on this one. I really like this one. I was long torn if I should get it or not. But a friend of mine, Martin, uh, he got this one and uh, can't wait if he's gonna show, uh, if, he, if he has it at home and gonna show show it to us. So me and Apple, we're all in this like little Facebook group. So <laughs> um, Mondo Traders Germany, by the way. So check that, check that out or Mondo Collectors Germany. That's, that's the correct one. And yeah, so this uh, this one is, uh, he has this one, I'm looking forward if he's gonna show us uh, when it's on his wall, how it's gonna look like. And yeah, a really cool contrast of colors here. Got all the characters in their different um, styles in there. Really nice piece. I really enjoyed the TV show. So um, yeah, if you enjoyed it as well, I don't know if it's still available, but it was for a long time, if it's still available on Mondo. So check in on that and maybe you're all lucky. And the last but not least one is High Life by Max Löffler, who's also a German artist, so two German artists this time. And he did this very cool uh, one and very simple one for High Life, which was a really, really good movie. Came out last year. I think it was um, was not very well noticed by, uh, by a lot of people. So I hope maybe this piece of art is at least noticed. And I think he did a really cool job with, I love, really love the flowers and like this glove and uh, how it represents this movie very well. And um, yeah, if you didn't check out the movie yet, please do so. It's worth you wa worth a watch, and especially when you're uh, around at home and uh, have to stay at home, check this one out. It's gonna be a ride though, so <laughs> be prepared. But um, yeah, check the movie out. I think maybe you love it as much as I did. and then try to get the poster. And our last one is gonna be the 30 by 30, 8990 show uh, by Dave Merrill. He did this one for um, for this upcoming show from the uh, um, alternative movie poster um, side or the, the this kind of gallery. And um, they get together different artists who do all who do movies from 89 and 90. There was also a show before, I think I talked about it last time as well, um, from for 87 and 88. And I got a mystery tube on that, which was really, really cool. And uh, yeah, looking forward for that show. There's a couple cool pieces, especially the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones. Home Alone is in there, really cool. Back to the Future was part of it, Batman. Uh, I think Die Hard should be in there as well. And yeah, many, many more. Uh, so yeah. Looking, looking forward for this kind of show. They have, they have really cool artists on. Go head over to Alternative Movie Poster, uh, Movie Posters, and then you will find which artists they're gonna work with. There are not that many pieces up yet, uh, which are for the show, but they will probably release it soon. So check in on that. Okay, so this is uh, this is all for now, and now we will talk to Eileen. So check it out. I've known Aline for quite some time now and I'm very glad to know her because she's a very cool person and a great poster artist. I followed her artwork for uh, a long time and I tried to pick my three favorite pieces of her work. And uh, so let's see what she has to say about those pieces. Welcome Aline. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. Always, always a pleasure. And uh, we t I talked to Scott and you know also Scott, so that was a very good connection there. And um, he's, is he already part of the poster posse, by the way, before we talk about that later, but uh, no, no, I don't think so. I don't think okay. no. I, th I think he needs to get in there. And uh, but that's, a, that's on another note, but I'm going to talk to Don about that if he's going to come on at some point. I hope so. We the talked Godfather. about it. 
Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um, I uh, had the chance to look at uh, your graphics, of course, over the years, and I picked one of my favorites or three mm. I really liked. And mm -hmm. first off, uh, since I am a big, big, big Mandalorian fan, I picked obviously the Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Uh, so uh, it's now in the middle and we can see it. And yeah, I really loved about this piece. I mean, the, the series is great. And since it's Star Wars and you put the helmet, which is the most important thing in a series, in the middle and uh, as, as in form of stars. So how, yeah. how did you come up with the idea? Uh, well, this is, since it's an official piece, we, uh, I did it with a poster posse and we started pretty early. So we didn't know anything. We didn't know about the child. We didn't know nothing basically did, did they have the did they have like the the silhouette and everything was was at this point did they uh, show that already or yeah, that, that was the given like that the mm -hmm. teaser poster was out and i think the first main poster i believe i don't know i, mm -hmm. I remember but uh yeah that was pretty much that and the first trailer uh okay. was pretty much the the things we should uh or we worked with uh and yeah that was this one scene where the mandalorian is walking in the desert and you mm. know lonely and you know uh that was very very inspiring and you know combining that with stars because star wars yeah, <laughs> yeah. duh it was of, yeah it was, like, it was an obvious thing to do yeah. uh but i thought it was like I, I wanted to create something really iconic like something you know mm. uh, a strong visual instead of really telling the story because we didn't know the story um yeah. so yeah that was the goal was to create a an iconic imagery yeah. Um, by the way, the, the Disney Plus started in Europe. And uh, did you have a chance to watch the, sh the show yet? Not yet. No, I'm still luckily uh, working. Uh, so I got Disney Plus yesterday, but uh -huh. I uh, I watched The Little Mermaid like really late last night. Yeah, very <laughs> my good. Favorite uh, Disney film, and I needed some some pickup movie like <laughs> pick me up movie, and I yeah, went with that. Nice. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna check out The Mandalorian. Okay, yeah, but, but speaking of the Mandalorian in the back, uh, you can see here, there is, I mean, if, if you zoom in, I guess it's uh, Baby Yoda, the, the Roos uh, Borges uh, uh, one, which is like perfect. I really love that. Uh, there are so many cute pieces out there. Yeah. That that little character is just so loved yeah. by audience and so many great artists. Uh, you know, gave their take on it. It was awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm so addicted to Baby Yoda. I actually ordered the sideshow life-size figure collectible thing oh. yeah oh. <laughs> so but i can't wait until it comes but it probably not that's not going to be this year i guess but yeah thanks corona thanks for doing it <laughs> can't cuddle my baby yoda but well it is what it is okay my uh, second piece i want to look at is your lighthouse one and I really, really loved, I really loved the movie. The movie was great. I watched it for my birthday last year. So that was a nice birthday present to myself. And I really liked the key art. And, and you already, and I think you said on your Instagram post or somewhere that uh, you hit something in there. Was it, was it your yeah, piece? Yeah. yeah. When you look at the coast, uh, yeah. like the, it's both uh, faces of the men. Uh, it's oh, the, the, the line. Oh, the yeah. line. Ah, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So it's Robert Pattinson on the right and one on the phone on the left. Oh, there you go. That's there. Sneaky, sneaky. I was like, I was like, because when I read, it, I was like, what? did she uh, like hit him like super tiny between the rocks? That's what that's what I was looking for. <laughs> They're like, oh. it's a subtle one. Like I, I like you know posters that have that little mm. twist in them where you mm. go like, ooh, okay, you know that mm -hmm. idea. Uh, and that was a very subtle one. Like a lot of people like just retweeted it and didn't, you know, think about it and then send a message later the oh my god, now I saw the faces and I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. So, um sp speaking of this poster because this poster has like a like a frame on like, at least at the top yeah. half. Um how did you how did you decide like like getting a frame into it because some artists do and some don't. So, um yeah, how how did it come? It's really a I think it's a it's a gut decision you make if if a frame works or if it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of fine artists that love 
uh, frames and stuff. Uh, I usually use them as an actual part of the composition. Uh, mm -hmm. I kind of like that it was breaking uh, in the middle uh, for that one. Uh, I usually like uh, when the the frame is kind of broke at some point, like when you know Andy Fairhurst uh, in his Star Wars piece did it beautifully with uh, Ray and and Kylo mm -hmm. breaking the frame, like that kind of stuff. I really like because it feels like it's breaking out of the image. Um, that I really like, and in this case, it just kind of felt right. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, also Matt Ferguson did on a lot of a lot of his pieces. Yeah. I, I I own the he has this border where uh, with the with the jaws one for example or is it in the one behind me? Oh, I, you can't see it. I guess yeah, I, I I don't think I, yeah, yeah. So he he did a lot. That, that's that's an interesting uh, way of of like handling it. And it's a yeah. and I also love those frames. But the the sad thing about it is um, it's hard to uh, get the um, get the passport two for it. That's true. Yeah. But since Framing it's like, hard run those, but. yeah, yeah. But like, if you frame it and like the just the that's the poster, then you're good to go. That, that is fine, yeah. Yeah, and my uh, third piece would be the Knives Out one, oh, because yeah. I'm a big Knives Out fan. I love that movie, and um, it it, so it, there, yeah, they 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 did all that with the yellow color. I saw the Phantom City Creative one, which yeah. was uh, also very cool, and I really love this one as well. I mean, like looking looking at the knives who, who actually did it. Even though did did you know did you do that before uh, you saw it or uh, was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think I did it like a week or two before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I didn't know. Like I again, I went with the trailers and the feel that hat and. Yeah. Uh, I created that when uh, Ryan Johnson actually wrote under it, like, oh, that's nice or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty cool. But how, how was that? How, how was that feeling? It's it's always like the best compliment you can get when like the, the actual actors or filmmakers, producers, like people mm -hmm. involved with uh, the movie uh, actually like it. That's the best compliment and feeling. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can have and that was really special because I like him as a as a person like he seems to be a, a really good guy um, so you're not on the on the uh, ruin Johnson train no 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 <laughs> Good, good, good. Because like I, I just saw it the other day. Uh, the other day, um, somebody blamed Ryan Johnson for like the Corona crisis and 2020 being a bad year. I was like, what the fuck, people? Come on, can't be. But okay, I, yes. I, I don't even spend time. Exactly. Stuff like that. Cause it's just, uh, yeah, it was just a meme somewhere in between. I don't know where it was, yeah. but somebody had it on Instagram. But sad, sad story. So. Um, Now, uh, since I talked about your, uh, since we talked about your art already, uh, let us delve into uh, who you are. How how did you start out? How was it? Uh, how did you come into this wonderful business of making posters? It was all actually a coincidence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I I'm a, a studied and uh, learned. No, that's not right. But you know, I did an apprenticeship in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, which is basically you're done after that, like you can work in the job. I did mm -hmm. that uh, as a graphic designer or media designer, uh, but that wasn't like enough. So I studied graphic design after that at university. Um, and that really opened, you know, uh, a lot of doors for me creatively. And I did a lot of screen printing, uh, just different kinds of like actually working with your hands and stuff. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and after that, I just, you know, went into usual agency work and worked at a couple of different agencies, mostly mm -hmm. advertising, and, you know, that your usual campaigns and stuff. So no film related stuff, just, mm -hmm. but did you, did you do stuff on your own, uh, so far at, at, at yeah, this point? That or? Was, yeah, that was pretty much like, I started probably like seven, six years ago. Uh, I started creating my own pieces, like because there was a movie coming out, uh, Kill the Messenger, and it didn't have any posters yet. And I was mm -hmm. really, I was familiar with the story, and I was really excited for it. So I created something, and that got picked up by 
the media and they thought it was the real stuff and they used it in their articles and interviews mm -hmm. and stuff and I was like oh god um, and stuff got real huh <laughs> stuff, stuff got real but that got me thinking okay if you know people think this is real then maybe this is actually a job that you know I could do and I love movies I always have um, why not try it? And that was pretty much the start of it. I tried it. Did you did you start at this point freelancing, or how how was it? Not yet. No, okay. that was pretty much besides uh, my my day job. Um, like uh, I would you know work eight hours and then go home and have some mm. fun with uh, with that kind of work, and then slowly, very slowly, like I think it took two three years. Mm -hmm. uh, that I did it as a hobby and that like for fun. Mm -hmm. And then more and more, you know, people came and went, hey, you know, can you do something for me? And hey, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so that started. And then pretty much it was a snowball effect okay. was the poster posse came knocking and that was a yeah, great just, community. How how how's that? How how does this start? I mean, um, I, I talked about it already that you had the connection with them, but how did it came uh, how did they came along? Uh, I think Don um, really first saw my, I did a Sky series, which was basically um, Contact, Interstellar, and Arrival. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did like a Sky series that got really popular on Twitter and stuff. And he saw it and he was like, oh, that's so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And we started talking a little and I don't know, he, he kind of liked me, I guess. And he was like, okay, I'm going to keep an eye on you. Uh, and I was invited uh, shortly, I would say, after that to join uh, for a, a guest piece. Um, mm -hmm. The Poster Posse does these passion projects where they just, you know, for fun, um, tackle a movie together as a group and then everyone creates something. Mm -hmm. um, how, uh, how big was the Posse back then? Or when was it? It was the... pretty big already. Like okay. I've been a member for like two years, mm -hmm. uh, but I think they were pretty big already. Like they they have done all the big ones. Okay. Um, so they weren't like indie or something. So I was mm -hmm. very flattered when when Don asked me, "Hey, you you want to do a a guest piece?" And then I did that, and that pretty much led after a while to uh, them asking me if I want to be part of it. Okay, very great. So since we talked a little bit about movies, what is the, uh, and, and since I do movie reviews, I mean, uh, what is the last movie you saw? Except I, uh, The Little Mermaid, because you saw it yesterday. Yeah, that but that <laughs> doesn't really count, because I've seen it like a billion times. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, the last one, and I've been raving about that actually on Instagram and Twitter, uh, just because I was so uh, impressed. Uh, was the platform? On... Okay, I just pulled it up, so it's in the middle now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw that too. So uh, I didn't do the review yet. So, but uh, what, what do you think so far? I mean, what do you think about the movie? I was. It was very impressive. Like I read afterwards that it was uh, his debut film, um, mm -hmm. which is even more impressive. Pulling that off, mm -hmm. um, it was a gut wrenching, brutal honest just very impressive piece of movie um i don't know i was very i, I felt very sick during it i i pretty mm -hmm. much i got really fast what the idea was and what the problems were mm -hmm. um and that makes it even worse i think because you know what's coming and um, it, felt, it totally felt like i think like the the corona situation with toilet paper and Absolutely. people in stores it's like crazy i don't know it, it just came to my mind also um uh, I, I read a, a headline for a review uh, which said it is snow piercer um coupled with saw <laughs> that was that like and and i think that's a good that's a that's a good point there and i really yeah. like um how they how they did that and uh it's a it's a very interesting movie, especially the social economic aspects as well as the um, like how how everything is um, separated in, in in this world and how people just think about themselves. It's a very nice topic, and it, yeah, I think and, they and did it very like well. The, the filmmaking itself was just exactly yeah, like the cinematography, the acting, mm -hmm. the light, the 
Yeah. You know, that was just, it was, I had chills like all over yeah. pretty much during the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so that was, that really left an impression with me, that movie. Uh, yeah. And I didn't expect that because I was just browsing through Netflix and doing the, okay, mm -hmm. you know, what am I going to watch? Yeah, I was, I was waiting for the movie for two weeks now. So, and I heard, I heard a lot of buzz about it because of the, uh, because of the festival, festival mm -hmm. stuff uh, it, it uh, did. And uh, I wish I could show the movie to my classes uh, and like in terms of uh, uh, like economy and like uh, social uh, yeah. aspects. But uh, since it's like uh, R rated and very brutal, yeah. sadly, I can't. No. But okay. Uh, so, I mean, I would ask you next question. What is the next movie you would definitely want to see in cinemas? But well, this is not happening. <sighs> so... Uh, what or what are you looking for maybe this year maybe uh in the future that is already announced but maybe i mean wonder woman got just pushed today i think mm. yeah that one looks just so much fun uh so that's definitely on the list for for movie experiences mm. um i definitely am looking forward to the candy man uh thing that mm. Mon monkey paw productions is putting out um mm -hmm big fan of everything Jordan Peele is involved in. Of course. Um, and what else? Oh, Jesus. I mean, there's Marvel coming out. So of course I'm down for that. That's always fun. Um, there's so much horror coming out. I feel the spiral one. Um, from I, just, I just put your, by the way, your, your Candyman poster in. in the oh movie. yeah. That was Since fun. we talked about that. Yeah, that was yeah. The, how 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 did this happen? I was just uh, have I had some time, uh, mm -hmm. and it's from time to time. It's that okay, you need to do something for yourself, because uh, again, I'm I'm still thank God I'm very busy. Uh, so it's um, you need that little bit of uh, fun time uh, mm -hmm. thrown in there from time to time, and that's pretty much what I did. I sat down for like I don't know four four or five hours. Mm -hmm. And just you know put that together because mm -hmm. I really liked the trailer. Um, yeah. And I I was just looking forward to it. Um, yeah. And then I did that. And the actor actually uh, last night posted uh, on my Instagram. Did the, oh, yeah, nice. This is cool. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Scott also uh, had a Scott also had a Candyman poster. On, so that's funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the movies coming out. So you know, a lot of artists try to look into the future for a little mm -hmm. bit just because you know. There's a hype train, um, mm -hmm. and people want to get on it. So uh, you will always see like these, you know, some some movies get a little more love when it comes to posters, yeah. um, just because everyone is so hyped. Exactly. So, what what are your thoughts on the video on demand front? I mean, a lot of uh, people are doing that, or a lot of studios doing that right now. I mean, Onward just got released, for example, and uh, yeah, so. Did, would you use that or is it interesting in terms of, I mean, posters? I mean, especially since you do a lot of digital stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for fun, yeah. I mean, the, 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 well, all the big companies that uh, I'm working with through different, either Poster Posse or uh, even other agencies, since the studios are currently closed down and not work. Mm -hmm. Uh, the official stuff uh, got put on hold, of course. Uh, yeah. So we have to um, see what happens there. Uh, I'm, I had just had a conversation the other day with a friend uh, where we were talking about how, um, you know, this all affects the the film industry and how I personally think Netflix and you know all the other players will um, buy some of the. Films that were supposed, of course, not the big, big ones, but like mm. sized to smaller uh, sized films, they will just buy them uh, so they can, you know, be released at some point this year yeah. and not sit somewhere uh, until everything gets opened up again. Um, so that's going to be interesting if we see a lot of movies that were supposed to have a cinema run that will now go directly to Netflix just so they can push it out. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think. I think I like the approach for like certain movies that are not, let's say, I mean, cinema is a certain uh, certain quality of watching movies, but mm -hmm. uh, also looking at it, at, like watching the films at home and on a good TV with a good sound set 
is also very rewarding, especially when the film is maybe not really uh, when you don't need a cinema in that case for mm -hmm. let's for example, Dunkirk or uh, Blade Runner 2049 or something like that. You have to watch it in the movies, of course. Yeah. Uh, or 1917. But uh, yeah. there's like, I mean, I could imagine watching Emma or uh, Bloodshot or something like that on, on, yeah. on video on demand. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's going to be the way uh, if this, you know, uh, grows into something that will last. And I mean, at this point, it will last a couple of months. Mm. Um, uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at. And I think that's going to affect artists as well, because, you know, uh, jobs will be less. So personally, I'm expecting a lot more personal projects. So people will, you know, just tackle stuff for fun because they can now, yeah. you know, not everyone is crazy busy. So they just use that time to create, which is awesome. Uh, so there's a little bit good to all this bad. I don't know. I, yeah. I look forward to all the art. Yeah, me too. Me too, definitely. I mean, they just brought out for Awesome Con, which is what was canceled, obviously. They put out uh, Joshua Budik did uh, like a drawing book, which is really cool. You can download it on on on, on, uh, oh, on awesome. uh, as a, I think PDF it was, and I, I will put it in the show notes. I will mm -hmm. I will get it to the to the people watching. So that's that's a really cool thing, and um, yeah, so. Speaking of favorite movies, I mean, you said all, already a Little Mermaid is one, but what is maybe another one you have? Uh, well, Arrival would be up there, definitely. Arrival. That was the... I, I put the po the poster in there. Yeah. So yeah. Um, which Why, also wh had uh, quite an impressive marketing campaign. Like I don't know if you uh, remember, but they had, I think the the a all the ships. <laughs> Every ship got its own poster, yeah. um, and it was kind of uh, kind of cool to have that um, on the teaser posters. The yeah. official one was kind of bad. Why, uh, why do you love the movie so much? I it's based on a short story that I read a couple years back, and okay. I really like that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the movie is a little different, but still, it has that essence, um, which is I think just really beautiful and just a mm -hmm. very Cool concept to think about. I like those mind-bending time, you know, that Nolan does or others. Yeah. Uh, I just like these uh, these ideas uh, filmmakers play with, uh, and that one just really, I don't know. It was that right amount of uh, just mysterious alien film meets drama meets. I don't know. It was that very perfect movie experience. Um, that leaves you a little, you know, thinky and just, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I just really enjoy it. Okay. So um, you already mentioned that you really like the idea of the posters with the, with the different chips in, yeah. in the different countries. So um, you also made a poster for that movie as well. And I'm going to pull it up here. Well, uh, to be honest, I made like, 20 <laughs> 20 okay there you go because <laughs> no, i i remember because the the trailers came out and everyone was like really going crazy mm -hmm. um so i pretty much made minimalist posters with a lot of um uh screenshots basically uh of course you know modifying blah 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 but mm -hmm. pretty much you know keeping because it has such a strong imagery mm -hmm. um and I remember I was writing to uh, the writer of the film, Eric Heiserer. I don't know how to say his name, mm -hmm. uh, but he's just a very nice guy. And he pretty much we got in contact. He was like, oh, my God, all these posters look so good. And can I have them for my phone? And I was like, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> you know, have fun with it. Um, and uh, that was just a very cool time because a lot of those uh, got, you know, mistaken for real ones as well which was kind of funny because that happens from time to time mm -hmm. um and yeah that was uh that one i i gave you though the the arrival one um i did before uh all the or be before i watched it but also before uh, a lot was known about it about the adaption itself okay cool. um and I just wanted, you know, I saw so many posters afterwards, after, you know, the film was out for a couple of weeks that were spoilers from hell, which <laughs> I hate in, in movie posters. Like Yeah, the, definitely. Yeah, which, you know, a lot of alternative po poster artists just, 
I don't know, don't care. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's 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 hard, especially looking at the Mandalorian right now. I mean, the, it was like how how much months, like six or something like that, when uh, since the show came out, and like, I mean, come on, baby Yoda. Yeah, this uh, is hard to not spoil yeah. for five months. I don't know what Disney thought about that. That was like crazy, given it only to five countries, huh? That they didn't reveal that, or what? Uh, that they, I mean, it was good that they didn't reveal it for the the actual start in the U.S. and like those five countries that had Disney Plus. But like, how? I mean, it was, it's not fair for the rest of the world, I'd say. Yeah, for us, it was kind of you know we we knew about it, but we couldn't watch it and we couldn't find out us out ourselves, which was kind of yeah. sad. But you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. Oh well. Um. So, uh, where was I? Uh. Yeah. Speaking of posters. Uh, what are your three favorite posters right now? Or at least how many do you have? <laughs> I have a lot. <laughs> um, I really, uh, I really enjoyed the whole um, Wonder Woman campaign. Mm -hmm. um, from I'm gonna, an, I'm gonna like, pull that up, yeah. The art, um, like official posters, that was uh -huh. definitely like everything that came out that had that. 80s shiny, chromey, I don't know vibe. Uh, that was just beautiful uh it doesn't tell you anything which is awesome uh it's just nice to look at and that sometimes mm -hmm. uh makes a good poster too when it's just something you know stunning yeah. to look at even um, i re i remember when the, the first posters came out for wonder woman they had like the official ones they had um they had in the, in the groups they actually posted those posters because they were really 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 great in, in the yeah. way they did that and did did you see by the way the Anne bambi uh one the i think she's a oh, ukrainian exactly. artist a, bo a bottleneck just came out yeah, with it yesterday yeah, two days ago i think yeah yeah, yeah exactly those are really nice as well i really yeah. like those yeah i think those are sold out though <laughs> yeah they are they are sadly they are but th yeah. that's the business i mean they go fast yeah, that's true that's true Okay, um, but uh, would you like to make a poster for uh, for Wonder Woman as well? Or did you make one already? Uh, I did one. Um, just a fun piece. Um, probably beginning of the year. I think it was my first this year, actually. It was just okay. a little 80s play around okay, okay, thing. Okay. Um, would I like to work on... I mean, the thing with these giant uh, key art projects is always that... You, you have a big audience, which can be, you know, good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, looking at, you know, posters like Spider-Man or, uh, you know, everything that gets ripped apart. Spider-Man, uh, yeah, that's. I and, think I'm, uh, every time we, every time we talk, I talk about like bad movie posters. I mentioned that Spider-Man Far From Home one. Yeah, ouch, ouch. I mean, the the problem that people not working in this industry um, don't understand is that this is never, ever a bad designer. This is mm -hmm. not a designer going, oh, this is what I like. This is always studios going and picking apart posters until they look like this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's usually, you know, just designed by committee, something you cannot, you know, stop as a graphic designer because and end of the day, you're just the hand doing the poster, but you're not, you know, making the yeah. decisions. So, uh, so yeah, working on these bigger projects, I've been um, part of a few, not huge ones, but, you know, reasonable sized. Uh, and it's just, you know, it can be very frustrating work because it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not a whole lot of creative freedom. Um, but also depends on the client, on the project. Um, you know, there's there's been birds of prey. Uh, I know one of the artists um, who worked on that, uh, mm. and that looked like so much fun, just because the campaign was so broad, like from yeah. hand on to just you know bubble gum pop colored awesome. Yeah, they they gave a free, like a free range right on that. So that yeah, was kind of nice. That looked like a fun campaign. Um, but you know, if you have your your um big cast movies like marvel or any other mm. bigger franchise it's just putting in faces and that is something i'm personally yeah. not super uh into but I you understand. know the job i has it has to be made no it has to be yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay um so you want to pick another one you want to um Invisible Man. Uh, Invisible did... Man, yeah. That was with the poster posse, right? 
Yeah, uh, the poster posse did a passion project for that one um, because everyone was really pumped mm. for the film. Um, and the one by um, Tom Miatke was mm. the one that pretty is much... He, is he also German? No, 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 no. Yeah, no. it sounded German, so I was wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always like, I think I actually. Australian? I'm not okay. sure. In, in the last couple of days, I actually um, saw Max Löffler, glaube ich, is his name. He's German. He did some stuff for Mondo for, okay. hi, for High Life. And I saw um, when I did last last time, I ch uh, when I checked up the, the, the Instagram pages of all the artists, mm -hmm. I found out that Simon Machner, he, he did a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. He's also a German artist from uh, Munich. So, yeah. Yeah, that did not, did not know yeah, that. I, yeah, because I'm. Uh, we're actually. Uh, we've been talking on Instagram. Uh, oh, but, there you go. Yeah, that was that was cool to find out that he was, you know, German as well. There's not a whole lot of us out there. So. Exactly. So that's that's. I mean, we're both German. We're talking English, so we have a bigger audience. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, that's um and and uh, yeah, we try to get something going here in Germany. We we should definitely. I'm I'm still working on that exhibition again. So. Uh, but give me some time. I'm, I'm doing the, the podcast thing right now, so eh, busy, busy. You're a busy, busy man. <laughs> yeah. No, and that one, uh, that one by Tom, um, definitely stood out to me. Like from there's there's a whole bunch of like everyone who hasn't checked out the the whole passion project. I I don't even know how many pieces there were. I think like mm -hmm. 15 or so. Like a, a whole lot. Yeah. I love. Uh, I, I posted the one of uh, Dolly for my review uh, because yeah, was this was cool. like so subtle with with him, yeah. like right between the letters. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this one, I I just uh, I don't know. I it resonated with me, like the the whole creepiness mm -hmm. without being actually you know there's no blood involved. It's just that very subtle creepiness and that I really like and it's just beautifully done like it's yeah. I know how hard that kind of stuff is and that is just impressive work so yeah that one definitely was one of the ones that I you know I, I, yeah. I think I even saved it on my phone because I loved it so much um, <laughs> very good and then I have on my list oh the run poster the run poster let's put that up here there it is yeah they released I think two or three posters but the the illustrated one was one of them and it, and it kind of has that weird soul base mm -hmm. esque i i don't even know what it is but it has that very nice uh minimalistic approach with yeah. it, which i really like um i don't know it just it was one of the posters where i went oh yeah cool something more brave and more you know mm -hmm. did do you watch the movie no or do, or, i haven't okay. seen But All it's, right. It's one of those I'm, I'm definitely going to see. All right. Uh, since we talk about uh, Mondo, which is a gallery, also Bottleneck is a, is a gallery. Um, do you collect as well, or do you have opinions on galleries? Do you do you work with them? Uh, personally, since I'm I'm more leaning towards key art, meaning uh, creating uh, actual official art that you know is for mm -hmm. marketing purposes. Uh, and not so much uh, the the gallery stuff. I absolutely love it. Like it's it's fun and it's a great community and stuff. Um, I I wouldn't call myself a collector. Like I have maybe. I mean, you can see over here. There's like a few. We, we can't we can't see that now. But but I, but I can see it in the in the big okay. one. There's the there's a Dolly one. I have I have it in my flat file. I have it in flat file. Oh man, that's that's a great piece. I love that piece. Yeah yeah. I, he gave that to me. I was I was very very honored. Um, yeah. No, but there's like a few uh, poster and posse pieces here. I have um, two ET pieces here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think we, we're gonna have some pictures uh, and then for the next question. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go there and then we're gonna see some more. But um, so you have a, a couple co collectors I pieces. I have a couple, but I wouldn't call myself a collector just because okay. uh, it's a lot of money uh, that would it go is. It that. is. I, I uh, know that. <laughs> and I'm also I don't know. I'm I'm since I'm an artist myself, I feel like if I buy something, I want to put it up. I want to actually mm -hmm. see it and putting it in a flat file and just letting it sit there. It's just not my, you know, understanding of art. Like yeah. I want to see it. I want to, you know, have fun I, with it. I, I try fun. to change it around a little bit. Like yeah, every yeah. every three months, I change my posters. Yeah. So which is I mean, awesome. But you know, I I I'm so 
picky with I with what I put on my walls and like the whole yeah. design of it all that I couldn't do that. Like I would. Go is it crazy. is it harder is it, for you being an artist? I mean, most of the time, I I mean, I like art and I like <laughs> designs. I think all my posters they they are a certain way. And uh, I think uh, 75% of them are Star Wars. So, <laughs> well, like, I mean, if you look in the back, it's, uh, oh, the, the, there's one, there's a DKNG Death Trooper for Rogue One and uh, Mandalorian, but the rest is not Star Wars. But like above me, there's a bunch of them over, over my TV. So, well, so a lot of Star Wars, but yeah, that, that's, that's how I pick them most of the time. And uh, I did, I think I did like, um, the last three months I did like a mostly Star Wars run, but I'm going to change it out and I'm going to put some different ones up. Well, if I, I mean, the stuff that I put up uh, is basically, first of all, stuff that I, the both the, the two I, ET pieces I have up is just because I love ET um, yeah. and because I think they're just beautiful. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna put it in the middle right now so people can see so it, it, now it's it's a look at your apartment as and, and your work as workplace obviously so yeah yeah, yeah yeah where I'm sitting right now basically <laughs> um yeah the two uh, ET pieces are um I forgot the artist he's not super uh on social media and stuff so I don't see his name all the time but he was I, I also try to remember, but I think I, I saw those somewhere. Is that the right one? I don't remember. Uh, but he's a very, very kind, uh, kind guy. Like he was so sweet when I ordered those. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those two are just because the, the movie means so much to me and because I loved the idea of having, you know, night and day. Um, mm -hmm. The rest of the stuff I have um, some... Bella Grace, um, she should did a I... piece. Wait, which one is it? Should, should <laughs> I, do I have a picture of that? Did you no, send me I one? I don't think so, no. Okay. Um, but that's Bella Grace. Uh, everyone who hasn't checked her out, she's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and just a very, very kind person. Um, I have a few of my vinyls on my wall that I did for, I think that's on the pictures as well. Um, oh yeah, there it is that I did for uh, Burning Witches Records. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the kitty also. <laughs> <laughs> the kitty. Um, yeah, so that is, and I have uh, a uh, American Psycho one mm -hmm. in the hallway. I have uh, a couple of original pieces. I have a, a drawing that I got for, uh, from Andy Fairhurst. Oh uh, my God, I talked to him. He's, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to get him to, to come on, but he's very, uh, Social distancing for real. He is, he is always, okay. uh, but he is, and I mean, there's a there's a an ongoing uh, joke, and it's not yeah. even a joke. I'm his biggest fangirl. Like he's just, <laughs> I love his work, and he knows, and he's very embarrassed by that. Uh, no, but he, uh, I think they did. Uh, Poster Posse used to do a sketchy Sunday or something, mm -hmm. uh, and there's this was like way back, and I won Andy's. Um, uh, where I could uh, uh, request a sketch from him, and I did mm -hmm. a nice. He did a, a Tim Burton one for me, so I have that. Wait, like, which one? Uh, Tim Burton of the person or Tim Burton the person? And oh, he, okay. like Arranged nice. all the characters nice. all around, and it's just very, very cool. Um, and yeah, I, I, I try to convince him to make that an official thing somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he has yet, but maybe, maybe Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, um, shout out to Andy. Please come on and uh, get Eileen her pictures and prints. <laughs> no, but in general, I I mean, I have a few, um, but I, like I said, I wouldn't call myself a collector. Mm -hmm. uh, and what what I like on my wall is basically either friends or, or movies that I that I love. Love. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That That's is, how I do it. Movies yeah. that I love. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's what what you look at, so you have to love it. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, yeah, there's also way too many movies that don't have you know the perfect poster yet, yep, which that's is true. Uh, you know. But that's also the fun about the whole thing mm. that you know sometimes that there's like the poster for it coming out, and you're like, oh mm. my god, why has nobody ever think about this before? Mm. Um. <laughs> 
I, I put your workplace back up. So um, is, is there a certain way you arrange your workplace or is, is there an idea behind it? And, and how do you work? Maybe we, we're going to maybe uh, pull up that question already. Um, well, I know that it's bad to work against light. So please don't come for me, people. Um, <laughs> but it's, I don't know, I, I prefer working very uh, minimalistically in both uh, my work, my actual work and uh, my living space. Mm -hmm. um, I like it to be uh, somewhat uh, very clean and organized. Uh, I don't know, my brain works better like that when I have not so much stuff lying around that can be a distraction, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's it's mostly, you know, a lot of white, a lot of not so much stuff I can I can focus on while at work. So I have to focus on this. Mm. And what what is your setup? I mean, uh, since I since you can see obviously there's a there's a portray mode, a screen, and a landscape iMac. So um, yeah, that, how on, how how do you work with that? The that one on the left um, is a ViewSonic, which I actually uh, won at a. Uh, the poster spy portfolio review, I think. Okay, nice. Last year, yeah, last year, um, and they were kind enough to give that to me as a price, uh, along with a Wacom, um, and uh, that one's along with a Wacom. Yeah. That that's very nice, man. Yeah. It was a very nice. <laughs> Good <bunch>. job. <laughs> Um, no, but that one is, is very nice for us since it's uh, very good in, in with colors and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very good for you know when I'm when I'm doing actual print work um, to look at stuff more you know detailed. Uh, mm -hmm. iMac yeah, is sure. awesome, but that one still has more depth to it. I, it feels yeah. uh, so. It's nice to have you know those two uh, working together. Um, besides that, it's mouse. Uh, yeah, the vacuum and how, how I mean, since we're talking about the vacuum already, uh, what how often do you use it in, in your work? Mm, it depends. I mean, for for my my image based stuff, like everything key art stuff, I usually don't use it because it's mm -hmm. not like I'm, I'm more familiar with the mouse for uh, some of my my illustrated stuff. I use it not too heavily because I still lean uh, towards vector. Uh, and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, but it's more for like refining stuff or um, actually playing around with drawing, which I do. It's just not something I want to push forward. Um, uh, but do, do you practice in that uh, regard? Or I practice, I practice a lot. I just don't okay. put it out because it's you okay. Know, okay. I, I wonder. I wonder what it looks. Like. At some point, you have to come on. When it's, at some point, I have to and probably will, but it's not. You know, it's, it's when it's Inktober. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe. Although, you know, we had a discussion with uh, the posse last year because Orlando uh, brought it up that, you mm. know, it's not real in Togo when it's uh, digital, which is kind of true, but also, you know, yeah. you work with what you have. And if you feel mm. more comfortable with using digital, that's fine too. Um, no, but it's, you know, some, at some point I will probably go more into drawing, but right now it's more, you know, this kind of style that I prefer. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that, that one is there and it's, it's being used just not for, um, okay. actual work, work, pro like uh, purposes, but yeah. But maybe soon in the future, <laughs> we will see. Okay. Um, speaking of your work, is there anything you can talk about right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Then what, what is the, what is the latest project you did then? Um, well, I can. I, I worked on some uh, Disney Plus titles, which mm -hmm. I cannot tell you. Which ones? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which ones? Um, but you know, you never know when you work with uh, you know agencies on this kind of stuff. You never know what makes it through and what not. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that I never see anything of that on Disney Plus, but it could be that some of that okay. will be mine. So I have But can you can you post it at some point maybe? Or yeah. did they it's just you you basically sold your work then to them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's basically what what happens in this um well with pretty much all the freelancers, it's work for hire. Yeah. Um yeah. so basically what you create belongs to the agency. 
Mm -hmm. um, so you're not allowed to uh, to share it. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, ask if, if it's okay. Yeah. You know, hey, can I? But especially for like bigger clients, it's it's usually not allowed. I understand. Um, what is your approach in general to your artwork? Is there like a concept you draw first or how do you do that? It depends. Like there's, um, for example, the last uh, Disney series I did, I did like Disney villains. Um, and I was talking to another artist, Ryan Shoemate, which is also an awesome artist to check out. Um, and we were talking and we were talking about uh, that I wanted to do um, some series for Disney, like my favorite Disney movies. And I was mm -hmm. just, you know, while we were talking, scribbling stuff. And that pretty much became the idea for that. Like I was, I was very shocked how close the actual series was to that sketch. Uh, but that doesn't happen most of the time. Like usually it's just me sitting around playing. Like it's not like there's an idea, but there's mm -hmm. no actual sketch. Like it's, you know, um, and sometimes it's just, you know, you watch a trailer, you see something and then you just start right away. And it's just, Mm -hmm. I don't okay. know. It's 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 very different from from project to project. I'd say there's there's more sketchy, heavy ones, and there's ones where I just dive mm -hmm. right in and just don't okay. do any sketching at all. How how long is the how, how long does it take to realize the the project? Then I mean, since sometimes it's faster, obviously, but then sometimes yeah. it's not. But like, what is the like the span? Maybe I think the fastest I did was like. 20 minutes. <laughs> I mean, if you have the idea and it fits, it fits. <laughs> yeah, that is the thing. <clears throat> if you work very minimalistically like me, uh, when the it's more about the idea than it is about the yeah. execution. When the idea is there, the execution is, is usually not the problem. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that a lot of my, my pieces are faster, not that fast, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's also, you know, work that like the, the Candyman one that was quite, mm -hmm. for me, it was quite detailed. Yeah. Uh, and that took like four or five hours. Like that oh, was a good. Pull that up again here. Yeah. Like that was a little longer than usual because I went into, you know, drawing a little bit more than yeah. than usual. But yeah. Okay. And um you you have you do you have prints of yourself or do you sell sometimes prints in, in, from your shops no nope. nothing nope. It, did you sell anything yet mm, i did a uh i did a limited poster run for the sky series and that that was mm -hmm. so popular back in the day i did like i think 50. okay um and they were gone in like 10 minutes <laughs> like it was ridiculous yeah. um but um no, personally, uh, since it's such a, uh, a gray area, that whole thing, uh, mm -hmm. and not even that gray, it's, it's pretty clear uh, that you're not supposed to, you know, sell stuff that uh, doesn't belong to you, which makes total of sense. Of course. Yeah. But uh, is, is, it, is it for you in the future? Do you want to sell at some point, maybe uh, from galleries license, of course, and like all in a legal way? I did uh, one of the, the I did a so a Stranger Things piece that made mm -hmm. it to the the cover of uh, an art book that Netflix okay. released, um, and that I actually have the license for. Like that, I could print that and sell that. Okay, cool. The problem was that when that happened, uh, I had a, a family issue, uh, and that totally got um, for it was forgotten. Like I didn't really think about it. Um, and now I'm just going to see when I'm, I'm going to do that print. Season four, season four, season <laughs> four. No, but yeah, that, I mean, of course there's, you know, I would love to work on, uh, on licensed stuff, uh, mm -hmm. as long as everything's, you know, safe and awesome. Yeah. Sure. What would you like? How would you like to your prints to come out? Would you what kind of way? Gisi clay print or uh, a screen print? What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, since I've done it myself before, um, of course, a uh, screen print would be awesome because mm -hmm. uh, it's just such, an, such a cool process. Uh, 
and it would work with my work. Like a lot of my pieces are so limited in color yeah. that it shouldn't be a problem doing that in in uh, as, as as silk screen, silk screen. Uh, but um, there's also nice glisse ones. Like I don't feel like that's you know any less uh, good. It's just different, and you have a mm -hmm. little range to it. Like when it comes to you know colors and stuff. So both, I would say, you know, it depend always depends on the uh, on the posture. Like there's so many uh, pieces that look just right uh, as a screen print, and so many that just look right as a mm -hmm. piece. So it's, I would be, you know, open to anything really. Okay. Um, speaking of work, is is there any IP or any idea you want to work on in the future? Could be anything from music again sports something old something new what are your thoughts um a lot of the 80s stuff is awesome like all the classic john hughes or mm -hmm. that kind of stuff did, awesome. did you hear about the uh, amp 3430 series yes yes i did i forgot to like i wanted to because you can you know enter and yeah be pick. I forgot to send in stuff because I wanted okay. to be in that so bad, but I just forgot. I was like, yeah, crazy busy, busy so yeah. I forgot. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm. I uh, heard about that one, and also the the artist that's going to be uh, in there, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to be a very impressive show. I I just ordered uh, last year. I ordered the mystery tube from the eighty seven eighty eight show, which was what really cool. That? I ha I got Untouchables by Rich Davies. I got Top Gun by Cesar Moreno. I got the original Pet Cemetery by Daniel uh, Danger. I got Princess Bride, but I don't know uh, who the artist was. And I got Big by Van Orton Design. Mm -hmm. And I what did I get anything else? I think that's it. I mean, a lot of stuff. <laughs> wow, but that's impressive. Was was it good? It, and the Untouchables one was a five of five. So. There's not a lot going around. That was uh, lucky. Yep, uh, yep, yep. That's right. And I'm I'm looking forward for a new one. There's a couple of cool artists. I'm looking forward to tackling certain projects, and so yeah. I'm really excited about that one. Yeah, those are always cool. Like I, I always look forward to these uh, annual shows when they come out, uh, mm -hmm. especially when they're not, you know, using the same artists over and over again. Mm -hmm. I love to see you know new faces doing. Uh, these kind of projects, so it's always cool to to see those coming back. Mm -hmm. Okay, speaking of artists, um, mm -hmm. my question, I'm probably going to ask everybody <laughs> that mm -hmm. is going to come on the show, uh, which like classical artist or maybe like older artist that doesn't do uh, film posters or mm -hmm. maybe maybe just ones or whatever, but would you like to see make a modern film poster? Well, I'm I'm more my home is in the more modern artists, so I'd say um, I was thinking about it uh, earlier. Actually, I was something like Pollock, just mm -hmm. <laughs> having colors everywhere. But it's very hard to make an actual movie poster with that. Uh, but just having how, what, blocks all over the place. Yeah, but what would you think? Which movie would go with that? Is there any? I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking as well. My first one would be Memento. That would be interesting. Jackson Pollock does Memento. That, that would be a very interesting combination. Um, no, I mean people like uh, Andy Warhol or Liechtenstein or mm -hmm. you know these kind of people. Um, I mean they were pretty close to the entertainment. Um, yeah. Uh, Niche, it's not even a niche, but yeah, industry. That's <laughs> called industry. Uh, yeah, uh, already. But uh, I would love to see, you know, some some Disney poster by Warhol, which would be kind of. I mean, I'm pretty sure he did stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but even something like a, a not an action film or something, you know, uh, just totally wild that would be cool like seeing that in a very reduced way very you know limited colors and stuff like that that would be cool 
Okay, my next question would be if you have any tips for the beginners out there. Is there any software they should use? Is there any hardware they should use? Social media ideas? Um, I mean, for software and hardware, it's it's pretty much the usual. You can, you know, work with PCs just as well as you can with a Mac. Um, Adobe is industry standards, but there's also, you know, uh, free stuff that you know especially for beginner beginners like seriously beginners uh, <laughs> like gimp and stuff that I, it works just fine of course the more you get into it you will see you know they have limits or yeah. you know are not that good but um you know that is just your usual grind basically uh as for social media um i would definitely i mean in in these days it's you cannot go without uh it's i i listened to your podcast with scott and i know he's not a big fan of <laughs> nope he's not <laughs> social media and stuff uh personally i never um i never saw it as, as a bad thing because i um met so many nice people um the community especially in alternative movie posters is just very yeah, very exactly welcoming and very you know nice and caring and all that uh, so I never saw it as a as a bad thing um, but I always saw it as a part of work and I think that's um, something that has to happen along the way you mm -hmm. have to make it part of your routine um, to post to share to you know just put yourself out there um, yeah. that is just I, I, I know the feeling I know the feeling yeah it's it's just very important and i know that you know it can be very disheartening when you know some some things don't do as well and that's just you know sad and beyond our control with all the algorithms and stuff um yeah. but we just have to push through like that's just part of the game and you kind of need to learn to play it um and don't you know give up um that is pretty much the the one thing i would tell every every person starting out is uh, don't give up because mm -hmm. if this is actually your dream and if this is the field you want to get into then uh, you need a longer breath because um, there's a lot of people um, and it's not as big a scene as uh, some other fields mm -hmm. so you need a longer breath but it's going to be worth it because you know the jobs are awesome it's big fun when you can work on you know all these uh, awesome movies or stuff that already you know th that you've already grew up with or mm -hmm. whatever um so yeah it's 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 a very very fun industry to work in but also an exhausting one mm -hmm. but you know it's it's i wouldn't do anything else like i'm exactly where i want to be <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as, as cheesy as that sounds, but um, no, I wouldn't trade it. I, I would go exactly down this road again. Um, Perfect. And yeah, it's just you know keep keep at it and you know have fun with it. That's that's important. Okay, and we also have uh, IG Instagram questions because I posted in a story uh, and people could write in, and I picked three of them. So first of all, the first one is not a question, but it's from a film Felix reviews and he just says basically hi and uh, he loves your art and he just wants to uh, wants to say that uh, that you should keep doing all of that all of the good work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then a Dave Kind kind uh, or a Duff Kind. Uh, he wrote or he, he asked uh, in, in German if you had any um, support by becoming a freelancer in, in this field. Uh, like from other artists or? Um, family, friends, artists. How, how did it happen? I mean, I, I went the safe way and pretty much reduced my hours in my day job. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, they let me do that, um, and then I pretty much gave up that job and went to one where I had even less hours. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, you know, gradually working less and less as an employee and just, you know, building my own network. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a pretty, at first, lonely road because you know you're you're leaving 
the safety of colleagues and you know you're you're slowly working your way into pretty much self isolation <laughs> <laughs> great times in corona huh great times in corona yeah but i mean i'm used to it now you know everyone yeah exactly training uh, oh my god i can't work from home and i'm like yeah i've been doing that for a while now and yeah you know, i get it it's hard don't get me wrong it's mm. that's what i meant like it can be very lonely that's why you you know mm. you build uh you skype people or you know chat with them or whatever yeah. but um i did have some uh i mean of course i had help from my family um my dad was a very big supporter of everything uh, i did um unfortunately he passed away uh short like in November of last year, yeah. um, but uh, he was very proud uh, and always very supportive. Same with my mom. Like they were always like, you know, you can do this, and if this is what you want, mm -hmm. uh, then you can make it. And that pretty much, you know, with with family and friends and the the right mindset, um, I think you can do it. I, of course, it's not a guarantee for jobs. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you know, no freelancer gets that safety. Um, but yeah, I, I did have some help when it comes to, uh, friends and family and other artists, okay. uh, like a lot of, you know, people, um, recommending or that mm. kind of stuff. That's always, you know, the, the best when that happens, when people recommend you to agencies and stuff, that's mm. just, that's gold. Okay. So yeah, be part of a community is always being part of a community yeah. is always good that way. Okay, and the last question is from James 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 Creative. Shout out to James. He's a fellow artist, and uh, yeah. we we already talked that uh, he's going to be on the, uh, on the on the show at some point. And uh, his question was, do you have any tips to work faster and more efficiently? As the good German that I am. Exactly, <laughs> work, working like a clockwork. <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's no. There's no actual tips. Like mm -hmm. it depends. I mean, I'm since I'm I'm coming from a background of you know agency work and that kind of stuff. You're trained to work fast, and you mm -hmm. you're trained to push out ideas again and again and again. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the the fast in my work now, which is coming up with ideas, pretty much uh, is rooted in that. Uh, that I learned how to, you know, um, come up with stuff fast. Um, I don't know if uh, if there's you can train that. You can, you know, give yourself little projects and say, hey, this movie, come up with three ideas within four hours. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's just little tricks like that that basically get you there someday. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's doing it over and over and over and over again, basically okay. it's as stupid as that sounds, but you know, practice makes, makes faster. Um, so that would be the only thing I could say, practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Okay. Um, then let's come to our last part. Uh, feel free to give some shout outs to artists, uh, that help you along the way, or you want to just say hi to and. Uh, connect and also where can the people find you let's start with that because that's easier uh, yeah. I, I am pretty much <laughs> everywhere on Facebook Instagram Twitter and website um, yeah I will I will post all of those of course yeah everything is SG posters so it's it's pretty easy to find um, yeah feel free to follow along if you like um, and shout outs well I how much time do you have? Um, there's so I'm many. gonna cut you off. <laughs> yeah. No, there's there's just so many awesome people. Of course, all the poster posse artists are dear to my heart, and I'm I'm very glad we just made a little check in the other day where everyone was you know checking in, uh, mm. and, you know, and letting everyone know that they're good. Yeah, I want to give I want to give him also a very big thank you for uh, posting the the first uh, movie poster podcast. Thank you, thank you on that part. So yeah, they're awesome. I mean, the the posse is is just a very, um, just a very generous and just a very very nice group of people. 
uh, generally yeah. nice. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very glad and proud to be a part of that. Um, so pretty much every single person, a shout out to them. It's just a lot of people, so uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how long I, I would sit here. No, but overall, you know, there's, there's, of course, people like uh, Ryan Shumay, who I mentioned earlier, who's, who's just put out the best, the fly artwork I've seen in years. Um, there's Gemma Klein. There's, uh, oh, I mentioned, I didn't mention her earlier. I actually bought, uh, or not bought, she was kind enough to send me uh, a piece of hers, which is uh, Freya Betts. She did a Tim Burton. Yeah, piece. hold up. I, I put her up I real quick. I, so, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Um, that made it into my living room. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm a huge Tim Burton fan. <clears throat> and, <laughs> yep, um, we noticed. <laughs> It kind of was obvious. No, but I'm a huge Tim Burton fan, and I, I screamed at her via Instagram, oh, my God, I need this. Uh, and she was kind enough to send me one. Um, cool. So uh, she's just beyond talented. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just so, so many. Um, <sighs> Should I make it easy on you? Shout out to all the ones that... that, that, that Ali didn't mention, but she posts a lot in her Instagram story that's, where you can find a lot of a lot of artists uh, that do that very great work. So check them definitely out. And uh, yeah, so I guess this is it. Thank you for uh, stopping by, Ali. It was really nice to have you. And uh, of course, thanks to all the listeners and viewers out there. And tune in to the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and to our IG page, Drop Mac Official. Leave us comments, shout outs, or topics and questions for the next shows. And bye.